Um, so once again, Kevin Bielmeyer, Economic Development Director, thank you for joining us for returning to work. Let's talk labor. Uh, that's what we're focused on in today's topic. Um, I'd like to uh, toss it to our first electman, Jeffrey Manville, to, uh, to say a few words uh, on behalf of the town of Southbury. Hello, everyone. Um, I won't be able to stay with you on the call. I have a number of back-to-back -back meetings. I just got off of a webinar with Advanced CT and trying to uh, figure out how we can get uh, some of our businesses back open and going. So I thank everybody for uh, attending this and asking the questions. And of course, we're going to be here to, Kevin Bielmeyer is here uh, to help any of our uh, businesses through this crisis. Uh, he's going to be my uh, kind of my liaison out there because of how busy I am with other uh, COVID and various related items uh, that I have to deal with uh, that's keeping me extremely busy. And I will get my uh, the feedback from Kevin and how we can assist uh, our businesses here in town to get you uh, get you back open as, as soon as possible uh, within uh, the guidelines of uh, the state and federal guidelines and in a safe manner. And we can uh, uh, hopefully get through this. So uh, I'll turn it back over to everybody else. And thank you. For everybody for attending. Thank you, Bruce Selectman. Um, we have a few more folks joining us now. Again, this is a recorded session, so we will be making uh, the recording available to uh, to all those that were not able to, uh, to join us and log in. Um, so, so Kevin, I do apologize. I do. I will let you lead this. Um, I do have some uh, matters I do have to take care of. Um, right now, so I, I'm going to have to leave the uh, conversation. I apologize for that. OK, no problem. I'll be sure to let you know if there were specific questions uh, for, for yourself. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. All right. And uh, as we continue this uh, conversation, um, we are focused, as I said, on this uh, topic of, of labor. Uh, so uh, for those of you that are just joining us, we do have with us uh, Catherine Awa, the Executive Director of the Northwest Regional Workforce Investment Jeff Board. Manville and, is now uh, exiting. She, uh, we, we don't have her visually, but we have her sonically here. So she is on the web with us, but uh, we thank her for being here. And we have Steve Romano, the Director of the Northwest Region for the Connecticut Department of, of Labor joining us. And uh, as I said, some of uh, our folks who are joining the call uh, submitted some pre-questions, which I'll uh, get to later. Um, but at this point, um, I think um, what, what I'd like to do is start with uh, with Catherine while we have her here. And uh, Catherine, since uh, we don't have you visually, I'm going to just pull up your um, your uh, organization's web page uh, while you uh, speak and feel free to direct me around it, uh, if you will. Um, so let me see here. I will attempt to do that and uh, Great. share my page, your page rather. Okay, and there we go. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, Kevin. I was um, notice noticing in the newspaper a few weeks ago that you had put out a survey to your businesses about uh, their their reopening likelihoods, and so that uh, caused me to reach out to you. And here we are today. So thank you for for putting this together. Um, I'm also pleased to have with me my, my partner at the American Job Center in Waterbury, Steve Romano. Uh, Steve and I are responsible for the Northwest Corner, uh, which includes uh, 41 municipalities along the 84 and 8 corridor down to Reading and Ridgefield up into the Northwest Corner along the Massachusetts New York border. So I, it's a great there that you've got my website up. I'd like to just say that during this time, uh, the Workforce Board, as well as the Department of Labor, are currently closed to the public. Uh, we are providing services remotely and virtually through uh, Zoom, GoToMeeting, and other uh, digital platforms so that we continue to serve both the employers and those folks that are job seeking during, the, during this time. Um, we have worked well with Steve in terms of addressing the needs of the unemployment. Our staff, some of our staff right now, uh, we have turned our phone systems over to the Department of Labor and our staff does their, does their best to answer basic UI questions. Um, as you can imagine with 
nearly 500,000 Connecticut residents filing UI. There's a lot of questions about uh, filing. A lot of folks we found that didn't have the digital literacy skills uh, to, 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 to understand how to navigate the, a web page to file a claim online. Uh, that was a barrier. We're, we're working hard and continue to work hard to overcome that. Uh, and I, I, Steve's staff has been great and, and our staff has been too. So we continue to provide services. We continue to work with employers. As you can imagine, there are a certain group of employers that have remained open and steadfast during this time. We've had grocers, logistics, we've got healthcare agencies, we've got childcare entities, anything that's directly related to the continuation of services during, during this crisis time, we've worked hard to get um, the, the, those employers needs met. As you can well imagine, uh, that additional $600 that was provided to folks on unemployment has served as a bit of a barrier in getting people to go back to work. In many cases, some of our lower waged workers are now um, earning more every week by staying home than by going back into the workforce. So that's a bit of a disincentive. We just want to be mindful that those additional $600 weekly payments will terminate the last week in July. So we anticipate a tsunami of people looking for work come probably late June. Uh, but in the meantime, folks that are looking for work, there's plenty out there and we're happy to help uh, create that linkage between the employer and the job seeker. Um, again, uh, that, that's, you know, like I said, our website is up. It's very active. The red banner across the top is does detail our COVID works, our, our COVID uh, opportunities. And then we just recently began taking applications for our summer youth employment program. Uh, the application is online. And as you can see in that, that second yellow bulleted, that will be, uh, that's the online application for our summer youth program for youth ages 14 to 21. And up above uh, for businesses and job seekers, that link will take you to a variety of services information. We continue to update that on a daily basis with the governor's release regarding reopening and the necessary policies and procedures that need to be in place for your various industries to get stood back up again. All right, thank you so much uh, for that. Catherine, I'm just going to um, go back to myself. <laughs> OK, and uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, pass the baton over to uh, Steve Romano and uh, Steve, I will uh, send it to you. Take it away. Well, thank you, Kevin. And again, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to be on your webinar today. And Kathy, Awad, thank you for your sound and solid partnership all these years. Uh, Kathy did cover a few of the things I was going to speak about, but just to kind of give you a little general state of the Labor Department right now, locally in Waterbury, uh, we work in very close collaboration and partnership with, with Kathy Wad, the Northwest <laughs> Region Workforce Investment Board, and their contracted vendors to help provide a wide array of services to employers. And that's our strongest connection. Also, the staff that work for me in the Labor Department, we also provide a lot of unemployment insurance services, mostly to the actual unemployed job seeker. Uh, as you would imagine now, uh, our uh, our jobs, our duties right now, our tasks are consumed with unemployment. Uh, we have our CT hires uh, link on our website where there's still plenty of job openings. I would uh, advise job seekers and employers that want to post openings on CT hires to take advantage of that. Uh, my business services represented right now is totally engrossed in the PUA project from the unemployment insurance side of things. So she's not going to be available to do a lot of the things that she normally does until around June 30th. As Kathy mentioned, it probably will be a great time for her to come back uh, to, to help get people back to work again. Also, I would like to mention that I am reporting to Waterbury every day. I've been coming here every day since the, the pandemic broke out. Uh, I like coming here. I, I feel like I'm more comfortable in this setting and I've been doing a lot, helping out a lot of employers and job seekers and unemployed insurance claimants as well while I'm here. So I want to make that aware to everybody out there. The staff that work directly for me and a lot of the Labor Department staff that work indirectly for me in this office are all teleworking now. We're all home. 
working from home like the rest of the country. And uh, that's been quite a process. Uh, I wish I could tell you that it was a seamless transition, but it was close to that, all things considered. So uh, Kevin had, has pulled up our website. And uh, Kevin, would this be a good time for me to just kind of peruse this website and point out some things to your viewers? Yes, that sounds great. Okay. Uh, I will lead it. I will follow your lead. All right. That hope, Hopefully that's going to work out. <laughs> that's going to work out. So uh, right below our commissioner in the center, red box is our FAQ uh, box. Correct. Yeah. So please select that if you don't mind. This this uh, FAQ uh, is is updated almost on a daily basis. It's got all sorts of information. And if we read the top half, Avi, it tells you why we created this and what drove this. If you scroll down a little bit, Kevin, if you don't mind, uh, where the table of contents are, let me stop right about there. So, again, all these bulleted items, as you would imagine, once you select that, it brings up a whole bevy of information on these different issues. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the information is directed towards the three federal CARES Act programs that the Department of Labor is currently administering or is about to administer. Uh, one of them is the, the federal pandemic unemployment compensation. That's the $600 Kathy Wad was referring to earlier. Uh, we have uh, dished out millions and millions of dollars of that so far in Connecticut. That started about probably a week and a half to two weeks ago. Uh, the other program that we just rolled out this week is called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, PUA. Uh, that is on this fact sheet as well. Uh, that may be, be of some interest, Kevin, to your uh, so to some of your employers that may be on this uh, on this this webinar right now, uh, that those those funds are designed to assist folks that are self-employed. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that, but again, that link will bring you to some information that uh, will help you. Yeah, thanks for doing that, Kevin. But here's the one thing I will tell you about the PUA program. Uh, it's it involves a little more legwork and background work than our typical unemployment programs because we're asking for a lot of tax information, uh, possibly self attestations down the road, just more information than, than we would require maybe of your average unemployed job seeker. Uh, we have a dedicated team of about 20 to 25 people that are assisting employers as we speak. Uh, this system that this PUA program is being administered on is called Reemploy CT. Uh, that is going to be the, the vendor and the product that we're going to roll out in a couple of years, which is going to encompass our entire unemployment insurance system that we have right now. So we kind of gave everybody a sneak preview of this and we broke this out just in time to assist us just solely right now for the PUA program. So that's the good news. The bad news for me locally and a lot of staff that are working teleworking from home now that are not part of that PUA team is they don't have access to reemploy CT, which I don't either. So I've been directing a lot of people to this site. And Kevin, if you wouldn't mind just scrolling down a little bit more. You bet. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna take it to another site on that, on the uh on the link. Uh yeah. So when we get to that red button on the, on the other website, Kevin, I'll show everybody how to, how to access the online assistance center for PUA. We'll do that before I stop talking, just so uh, anyone that's self-employed that's on this call is going to know where to go to, to process a question to our staff so that they can assist them, okay? Yep. So that pretty much okay. outlines the, the, the other two, the three Federal CARES Act program. It's updated daily. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Kevin, or Kevin, right there, which is unemployment services. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Select that, please. Now, right in the top there, the first bullet on the left, file your claim online. And then uh, scroll down a bit, and you'll see our red PUA button. Again, and I, I will, before you do click that, Kevin, this is where everyone has to go to. If you're again self-employed to file your claim, we'll say one thing though: it's a two-step process. And we get into that on that last section we just looked at, and it's going to probably highlight it here as well. Anyone that is self-employed needs to file a standard unemployment insurance claim, the 26 weeks, so to speak. Okay, we need to have that information on our system because we need to determine whether or not 
uh, you're no, what we call no wage credit, meaning you have no earnings filed in our system. Because if a lot of times we're getting folks that are self-employed, but they also have a part-time job, excuse me, because they have earnings on our system, uh, those folks have to be steered towards filing unemployment those 26 weeks on that versus going out to a PUA uh, income where we derive it from your actual earnings as a, as a, as a business. Uh, in most cases, those earnings don't equate to the, the money they make as a self-employed you know, entity and their unemployment rate is lower. So we've been getting lots and lots of calls about that. And unfortunately, that's federal law. I asked this question on a conference call with our commissioners yesterday, and they very clearly told me that you know, if, if anybody has wages on our in our base period on this system, they have to file unemployment based on those wages. And uh, they technically wouldn't be, uh, they have to, they still would be a PUA participant, but those, their weekly benefit rate will be based on those wages. So that's something I want to point out. So that's why they have to file the claim. The second part of the process, obviously, is going to this red button and filing your claim. If you wouldn't mind selecting that, Kevin, thank you. And if, once you go through this, uh, again, take your time like anything else. I only advise you to complete the required fields if there are required fields. Uh, there's there there are there's one window for you to attach various documents that would relate to your income. Uh, I think they ask for your 1099 tax information. Uh, they may need other information. Uh, part of what that team is that we've created, the PUA team that's in Weathersfield now, that's working as we speak, part of their task is to follow up with you on any questions or issues or problems you may have with regard to this. I can tell you I had a couple calls already today, and I directed them to in that gray shaded box, uh, Kevin, the fourth bullet down, it says PUA Online Assistance Center, correct, sir, right there, yep. And this is what I would advise all your, your viewers now. If they file the PUA claim and they have an issue, uh, and you can see there's three distinct things that they identify. One is to your accounts lock. If that's just the problem you have, just select that first one. If you've got your, your user ID, get the second bullet. And, of course, that third bullet is kind of a free-form text box that anybody could use for all kinds of questions, and that's usually where most people are directed to. So. Uh, that's a little information right there, uh, Kevin. I, I can uh, speak and answer some questions. I don't know if there's anything else that you think I should cover. Maybe I forgot, but uh, again, I can tell you that our, our, our agency has processed over 500,000 claims in the last seven or eight weeks. And that's, you know, epic proportions in terms of what we, we usually do on a, on a normal scale. And uh, again, I we're, we're behind on some things, but our staff are working overtime, and we're really, really put a dent in those numbers, and we continue to just work every day, one at a time, to try to get to everybody. So I appreciate everybody's patience, and I'm hoping I can answer any questions that you have, Kevin. And thanks again for having me on. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I apologize. I just see a note that somebody said um, the um, audio is is uh, is echoing, and I and I realize that's probably because of one of the open mics on our end. So I apologize for that. Um, I will, um, now I think what I'll do is, uh, somebody asked about the uh, the website again for the um, uh, COVID FAQ. Uh, I'm gonna have a, um, a list I'm gonna share at the end and also send it out to all of our attendees uh, of all of the links that we showed you during the course of this um, session. So um, I want to also turn your attention if you are just joining us or if you didn't hear me say it earlier, there is a um, Q, a, a question button on the upper part for Q&A. Um, as I said, we do have um, some folks who sent some questions in ahead of time. So I think what I'll do is at this point is jump to those questions and see um, if we have some answers for folks. Um, so one of the questions had to do with the the PPP loan, the Personal Protection, uh, Paycheck Protection Loan Program, which is not really the topic of this uh, specific webinar. Um, although um, any of the questions that are sort of not on topic with our guests, um, I will be um, reaching out to you directly or, yeah, afterwards 
for an answer to some of those questions. And I also hope to have a future um, webinar that does uh, focus on the, the loan programs, particularly on the forgiveness of those loans, because that is uh, some of the guidelines that are still coming out on how to um, how, how to have those forgiven. Um, another question here is, is how will I know when I can open? I'm an after school learning program and by definition of distance learning uh, was deemed an essential service. Do I need to provide any information or seek permission uh, from the local authorities before opening? Um, that uh, question is not necessarily uh, one for, for you guys either, is it? Unless anybody feels like they want to jump in. It sounds really, hang on, Steve, let me unmute you here. Steve, can you reach down and see if you've muted yourself for chance for chance? Oh boy, I did. My apologies. Okay, there we go. I didn't do that, but anyway, <laughs> I should have right. noticed it. So, Kevin, on that on that FAQ, okay, if you go to uh, you know the yeah, and then uh, the, the seven or eight bulleted items, one of the items says uh, unemployment. It says uh, unemployment insurance FAQs for employers. And I selected that and I scrolled down to the bottom and this may or may not be helpful, but I think it kind of gets people in the right direction. Uh, it says, uh, I'm sorry, you have to go back to the, uh, yeah, back to the main page, uh, Kevin, or website. Here we go. Then the FAQ box in the center. <coughs> then scroll down a little bit to uh, the employer. Uh, uh, yeah, unemployment insurance facts employers right there. Up one, that's it, that one right there. And almost to the bottom of that page. And that, yeah, go farther down. It's going to start with which businesses are deemed essential under Governor Lamont's executive order. Right there. So this may not be exactly what that, what, what, to answer that question, but this is a site that I think could help you. And again, any further questions not answered in this guidance should be sent. To, and I think the DECD could be helpful in that sense so yes that may be something i would have them try uh, kevin i would i would add that yes yeah, steve is correct the decd website as well as the advanced ct site will both have a comprehensive listing and the requirements uh that each of those industry sectors as they begin to stand back up should be implementing when they do so i know there's been specific ones laid out for uh hairdressing and salons for restaurants, for offices. Uh, there's a significant uh, document associated with each one of those industries about what they believe are the best workplace safe practices during the reopening. And when, you know, right now we know that May 20th outside, you can open up restaurants if you have outside seating, uh, they're, then they're staggered for capacity. So I think that the good guidance will come from those websites. I'm going to be sharing those, like I said, at the uh, at the end uh, with our group, so uh, we can we can do that. All right, so let's get to another question here. Um, uh, this is probably for you, Catherine. How are your services changing to meet the needs of the workforce today and in the near future? What do you see as the most pressing need for job seekers today? So I would say the most pressing need for job seekers today didn't change. Uh, they need to have work readiness skills. They need to uh, be on time. They need to be diligent in their efforts on behalf of the employer. They need to communicate to the employer uh, with the employer. They need to be good problem solvers and members of teams. So the COVID didn't 
reflect what a job seeker needs to bring to an employer as far as um, you know soft skills and work readiness skills. Obviously, the the talent that the employer is seeking and the talent that the job seeker has needs to match. Uh, as far as the way we operate, uh, currently we're operating virtually. We're uh, we're doing online applications. We're using Zoom and GoToMeeting technology to hold orientations and deliver services one-on-one -on -one opportunities, meetings, uh, electronic signatures are being secured, uh, very um, significant increase in the use of uh, our digital technology to deliver services. We see that continuing in the near future. Uh, for those clients that need to come in and meet with uh, a case manager, the office is being retrofitted now with sneeze guards. Uh, each of the employees' cubicles will have a protective shield so that the participant or the client can sit there knowing that they're safe. There are safeguards to enter the building regarding temperature taking, wearing of masks, uh, entering in one door, exiting out another door. Uh, our staff will begin to return and when they do, it'll be uh, on teamed basis. We're calling them the X team and the O team uh, and they'll be in on A days and B days. So they'll be rotating so that we don't exceed the capacity and we're careful as to where people are sitting to minimize, you know, to maximize our social distancing. Uh, so again, we're, we're delivering services virtually. Uh, I think the whole world went virtual not too long ago and uh, many of the staff continue to work from home, which is a, com a whole new way to work for many of us, but uh, our services will continue. And again, as from the job seekers perspective, uh, be on time, look them in the eye, do a good job, and you should be fine. I'm unable to hear you. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I can. Yeah, no, Sorry. good. I was I was muted, so we didn't have an echo. Um, all righty, where did my stand by for my I lost my question page? Here we go. Um, if a person is offered a job starts day one on day two, they said that they need to be out. Uh, e F M L A is that legal? Is there not a good faith hire and Perhaps do they not have to pay them? You know, can you explain a little bit about the rules that govern this and what if they tell us that, say, two weeks after they're being hired? Um, I, who would like to take that? I think, Steve, you said you were going to jump in on that one, right? Yes, sir. So, Kevin, again, in that same link that we just were at, pull it right up again if you'd like. Sure. Hang on one second. Let me yeah, thank you. share my screen. And, uh, go up uh, up a little bit uh actually i think we got to go maybe one back arrow back one all right let me let me make it live so that everybody can see it all right um now everybody can see what I'm doing here. And you said I'm going back. Back one screen, yep. Earlier there screen. we go. That okay. I'm kind of perfect. And if we, we mind scrolling down, please. Sure. And we have a link right there. A little, little up we go. You see FMLA FAQs right there. there. Yep. And again, they don't get to a lot of FAQs, but the most important thing is there's some links that you could you utilize to ask questions. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, some various links there, okay? And there are federal links. And there's some obviously some good questions that could possibly be answered that as well. Sure. Uh, so I, I would reference this first. If I was an employer and that was the scenario you described. I, I could also say this. That again, if you're an employer and uh, you have someone that comes back to work for you, OK? And you said that they work a day and then they decide they need to go on FMLA or they need, they need to leave on their own and they cannot work. That, does that pretty much describe the question, Kevin? I, be, I believe so, but I, 
I would need to jump back to the page and I'm sharing my screen, but <laughs> that's uh, that's in a nutshell. Yeah. OK, so when that person, uh, if they go on FMLA, then they go on FMLA. But with regard to unemployment insurance, if they file an unemployment insurance claim, everything's online, of course, our online system, uh, the claimant would have to indicate the reason for separation. And that would be a, uh, a voluntary separation or a quit, so to speak, even though, you know, sounds kind of harsh, but that's what it, that's what it is in our world. And there would be a, a hearing that we scheduled and a, an adjudicator would take the employer's statement, would take, they would take the unemployed insured claimant's statement and they, they would make a decision as to whether or not they could collect unemployment or not. So just, you know, on our end, that's what would happen. Uh, another question that's uh, that's been presented to us a lot, and Kathy may have brought this up, and if she did, I apologize for repeating it, but a lot of times employers are making modified offers of re-employment to their employees, and their employees are not accepting that, okay, opting to not come back to work. So, if you're an employer who has made a bona fide work offer, re offer of rehire to a to a former employee who's been laid off because of this COVID-19, and uh, that employee refuses to come back to work, uh, this is what you need to do, okay? It's quite simple. And it's somewhere on those links as well, Kevin, but on, on a company on a company letterhead, if possible, uh, they would need to document this information. The name of the, the employee, the, that, the social, social security number of that employee, the date that they made the refusal, the date that the employer made the job offer to this person and the date that the person refused, number one. And then number two would be the date that the, the worker was scheduled to come back in work. For example, I'm offering your job next Monday. That would be the date we would need as well. Uh, all the employer contact information that could be useful on that letter, contact information and any other information you want to put on there. And then you would fax that information to Department of Labor's Merit Rating Unit in Weathersfield. That number, I'll say it twice, is 860-263-6723. And again, I'll repeat it, 860-263-6723. And tell me again what that number is for, Steve. So if somebody, uh, refuses rehire for, for, from an employer's perspective, that employer has the right to uh, tally all that information I just described on that letterhead and fax it to that number. That's our merit rating unit. What they will do is that they get those every day. Uh, they'll put a stop payment on the person's, the employee's unemployment, and there'll be a hearing set up. And they'll, again, send that information to the employer and to the claimant, and they'll have to adjudicate <laughs> whether or not the person could collect or not. Okay? Can't hear you, Kevin, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, Steve. All righty, um, and I'm, I have just check real quick here in our, uh, our chat box, our question box. Um, as I mentioned, there will be a info sheet that I'm going to send out with all these links. So if you missed any of these, somebody asked if this is being recorded. Yes, it is. Um, will the uh, health district be visiting establishments prior to opening? Um, the health department has just uh, released uh, yesterday uh, specific for um, restaurant reopenings, uh, how they're going to be handling it in their applications. And they're, all, and they're making it very simple. Um, and they're going to be following this up uh, probably as early as today or tomorrow for uh, for the non restaurants that are uh, able to be opening like uh, salons, etc. Um, so they they're well on their way to uh, finalizing their guidelines uh, for what they're going to require. And it's 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 they kept it very, very simple. Um, the town um, as well. We are um, just about ready to the ink is almost dry on uh, some temporary um, zoning permits to allow the outdoor seating and variations on that theme uh, for the restaurants that have already begun requiring of course. Uh, so we're going to be uh, addressing that shortly. That may end up being the, the, the second webinar uh, that we have, um, but prior to that, we'll have that information uh, going out in my updates. Um, 
Uh, we have a question here. Uh, I filed for the PUA with my Schedule C. Is that enough? I got a response that would that I would receive the minimum, which doesn't seem right. Can I schedule? Can I send rather my Schedule C again? And if so, how? Okay, I'm guessing that'd be for me, Kevin, right? So, yep. again, you may remember we went to that PUA, the red button. We went to the red button, then we went to, we clicked on that, and we came up with that gray shaded box with the online assistance center link, the fourth bullet down. I would advise anyone in that predicament to go to that site, go to the free form text box, and uh, yeah, we could do it again, Kevin, if you'd like. So go down to, uh, you gotta go down, down, scroll down, sir. Yeah. You, yeah, you gotta scroll down okay, a little just, bit. Just getting into it. I'm sorry. The unemployment services right there in the top. Yep. Un unemployment services. I don't know. Yep, right there. And then filing your claim online. Top bullet on the left. And then you'll see the PUA red box. Just select that. And then the, the fourth link down uh, to ask that question. Yep. And it'd be the, the, the third bullet probably sounds like is what you would do. Just kind of general question. So what, what I've been told about this, Kevin, from a, we have a couple staff people that are helping on this project that uh, self-employed people are, are, are attaching certain documents. We're not sure if all these documents are getting through or not. I'm not really sure what the problem is, but what will happen is the system will automatically default to 50% of the average benefit rate in Connecticut, which is around $400 because these folks are being set up for $198 or somewhere, give or take a, a dollar or two there. So if they feel they earn more money, I would go to the site, indicate exactly uh, what you uh, your concern is. I'm not, I can't, I'm not sure if they can attach those documents to that site or not. If, if you can, then I would do it. I don't know if you're able to do that or not. Or maybe you could cut and paste the, the information and somehow get it in the, in the free form text box. Uh, I don't know if there's a spot there or not. I haven't looked at this. And uh, it doesn't again, look like this. Look like this is what you fill out here. Yep, that's correct. Right there, please describe how we can help you. So maybe maybe you could kind of cut and paste some something in there. But I think what they're doing is they're they're calling everybody back. They're getting the information verbally over the telephone right now. And then making more arrangements for any follow up faxes or scanning so that we could resolve the issue. So Okay. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Um, all right, and um, just double checking that I don't have another question I've missed. Uh, okay, we mentioned about guidelines for reopening. Um, I uh, I sent information out that the uh, state has released. They have a very detailed um, sector by sector release for the May 20th for those uh, first businesses being um, permitted to open with those guidelines. Um, I also will have a link uh, to that to that same information uh, that I'll have at the end of this uh, webinar that I'll send out and make available. But um, the state has released that, and they're continuing to uh, to update their their guidelines as as they go. Uh, as you mentioned, Advanced CT um, is is one of the sources where the Reopen Connecticut information is coming. But the Reopen Connecticut has their own website now uh, as well. Um, all righty. So just double checking that I don't have a missed question. As I said, this uh, conversation today is focused around uh, labor in reopening. Um, we will have uh, uh, one upcoming uh, that's focused on the reopening of 
uh, restaurants and, and other um, businesses that are going to be eligible to reopen come May 20th. Again, it's not mandated. I think you probably have heard this. It's not required of you to open on May 20th just because you happen to fall under those uh, particular establishments that are allowed to. Um, and there are um, stringent guidelines uh, that are being required in order to do so. So uh, the town is um, trying to get sort of out ahead of this. Uh, taking a look at those requirements, working with our planning and zoning departments, uh, as well as um, the health department to, uh, to come up with those guidelines. We're um, just about there. The health department's already released uh, their uh, application. Uh, again, it's, it's, an, it's an easy one. We've already got somebody that's gone through the process uh, and is now on to, uh, to uh, planning and zoning uh, approvals for uh, an expansion of their outdoor seating for the restaurant. So um, we're, we're well underway. Uh, we're going to do this uh, safely. I thought uh, we would start with uh, having these this webinar series as we get uh, near to these uh, reopening uh, dates that uh, will continue to be uh, coming, beginning with the first one on the 20th. So um, at this time, let me uh, just uh, ask uh, Catherine if you're still with us. Do you have any uh, uh, last thoughts? To, to leave us with. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, a uh, couple questions just jumped in. Let me just check here. Nope. Okay. Catherine, any uh, any any final thoughts uh, on this uh, topic today? Sure. I think that um, a lot of us are looking forward to getting back to work. It may not be as it once was. It may never be like that again, but very interesting times. We have we believe that we've done our best to meet the challenge. We're here to continue to assist the employers and the job seekers. Uh, we will post on the website once those phone numbers come back to us, because currently they're being used uh, by staff to assist the Department of Labor. Uh, but if you call and leave a message, we can get back to you because our voicemails are still working. Uh, and again, you can just email us if you have any questions at info at nr wib.org uh, and again we're encouraged we're here we're encouraged to get back to uh, get back to uh, work in the fashion that we used to know it and help them help those employees that are looking to get back to work get back to work and those employers navigate what will be the new normal thank you Catherine and thanks for joining us uh, for this uh, web call um, as well and uh, Steve um, I know you've done uh, a lot of uh, speaking on this uh, today, but I did want to throw up this uh, this uh, this update from the Department of Labor on the public assistance. And uh, uh, I don't think we we put this up yet um, this afternoon. So if you want to maybe just quickly tell us what we're looking at, and um, and then any last words. Okay. So this is what we had sent yesterday, I believe. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, we, we update these every couple of days and it just pretty much covers everything we're doing. Uh, in terms of the claims we're processing, it gets into some of the specifics of the, the various dates that we're going to start uh, administering the uh, F, FPUC, the PUA programs, some helpful information. So again, another publication we sent out. This just comes from, uh, from our Deputy Commissioner, uh, Dante Bartolomeo. And uh, she does a nice job with this, and this is really great information. I get a lot of, uh, we may, I send this out to my network, Michelle Caffey sends it out to her network. A lot of employers and, and, uh, and claimants themselves uh, find this very useful. So uh, that's something that I, that I will send out to everyone, and maybe we could, I could send it to you as well, Kevin, to send to your, your constituents in the, in the, in the South Bay area. And, and as far as uh, any other closing comments, I kind of agree with Kathy. Uh, Right now, the, our, the Department of Labor is engrossed in unemployment insurance. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, is this is this uh, is modified down the road, and the claim load gets less and less burdensome. That we can get back to some of the employment services we're very proud to provide, and get some staff back in position to get people back to work again, as Kathy mentioned. But at least for the near future, uh, again, everyone's doing unemployment around here. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Catherine. I appreciate you joining us, and uh, thanks to everybody out there for your patience uh, with uh, with this. Our first uh, Southbury uh, Return to Work webinar. Uh, we're going to try to do one of these a week on uh, on different topics. Like I said, coming up, we'll do one on the reopening specifically around 
uh, restaurants and the outdoor seating, uh, figure out what's going on uh, regarding uh, serving of alcohol out, outdoors, which I know is, is uh, of, in, of interest. So some creative ideas in the works there to, uh, to help everyone be able to do this um, uh, safely, of course. And, uh, and then the other, uh, probably the topic that'll follow that is uh, uh, how to navigate the uh, forgiveness portion of the uh, Paycheck Protection, um, as well as our survey, which wrapped up uh, at midnight last night, our business survey. So we'll be presenting the results of, of that of, uh, from our 100 participants or so of that survey. So at this time, again, thank you for joining us and uh, have a safe and wonderful day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.